dopamine, the hormone of direction. Let's start with the one everyone talks about, dopamine, but not the way you usually hear it. Most people call dopamine the feel-good chemical, but that's not really true. Dopamine isn't about happiness. It's about drive. It's the feeling that something ahead of you is worth moving toward. Dopamine is what makes your brain lean forward. It's the spark behind motivation, curiosity, and focus. When dopamine is flowing well, you feel alert, engaged, and capable. You want to start things. You can lock in. Life feels interesting. When dopamine is low, everything feels heavier, not sad. Just harder to begin, harder to care, harder to focus. And suddenly you realize, oh, that's why procrastination doesn't feel like a choice sometimes. Dopamine doesn't ask, am I happy? It asks, is this worth it? Right next to dopamine is another chemical doing something completely different. Serotonin, the hormone of stability. If dopamine is about movement, serotonin is about balance. Serotonin regulates mood, emotional stability, patience, confidence, and your ability to feel okay in the present moment. It's the difference between feeling restless and feeling grounded. When serotonin is healthy, emotions feel manageable. Stress doesn't knock you off balance as easily. You can pause and respond instead of reacting. When serotonin is low, everything feels heavier. Thoughts loop, anxiety creeps in, sleep gets messy. Not because life changed, but because your emotional buffer weakened. Here's something most people don't realize. About 90% of serotonin is made in the gut, not the brain. That's why sleep, nutrition, routine, sunlight, and stress affect mood more than mindset alone. Your emotional state isn't just psychological, it's biological. Dopamine says, what should I go after? Serotonin asks, am I okay right now? When that sense of okay disappears, the brain becomes more sensitive to stress, which brings us to cortisol. Cortisol, the survival hormone. Cortisol gets a bad reputation, but it isn't the enemy. It's what helps you wake up, focus, and respond to pressure. Cortisol sharpens you when something needs your attention. The problem starts when it doesn't turn off, when stress becomes constant, deadlines, overthinking, pressure, expectations. Cortisol stays high, and your body stays tense. You feel tired, but wired, restless, on edge. Calm feels just out of reach. Your body isn't panicking for no reason. It thinks it still needs to protect you. And when cortisol stays high for too long, it starts interfering with everything else. Dopamine drops, serotonin struggles, sleep gets worse. The whole system feels off. Cortisol asks one question. Do I need to stay on guard? And when the answer never becomes no, the system overloads. That overload often triggers the fastest chemical of them all. Adrenaline, the chemical of now. Adrenaline doesn't wait for analysis. It hits instantly. It hits when something suddenly matters right now. Heart racing, breath quickening, senses sharpening. No time to think, just act. Adrenaline is speed. It's what kicks in during excitement, fear, pressure, or surprise. In short bursts, adrenaline feels powerful, alive, electric. But adrenaline isn't meant to live there. When life keeps triggering adrenaline over and over, your nervous system never fully comes down. Anxiety starts to feel physical, your body stays braced, and relaxation feels unfamiliar. Here's the wild part. Excitement and anxiety feel almost identical in the body. Same chemicals, different meaning. Adrenaline doesn't ask why something matters. It only asks, do I need to act right now? Your body doesn't know the story, it just reacts. And that's only the front half of the system. Because after drive, balance, stress, and urgency, your body still needs connection, recovery, strength, rest, and grounding. That's where the next chemicals come in. Oxytocin, the hormone of connection. Oxytocin is what your body releases when you feel connected. Not excited, not pressured, just safe. It shows up in moments of trust, warmth, understanding, and belonging. Like during touch, eye contact, shared laughter, and meaningful conversations. When someone listens to you and really hears you, or when you feel accepted instead of evaluated. Oxytocin tells your nervous system, you don't have to be on guard right now. It softens stress. It lowers the volume on cortisol and adrenaline. This is why genuine connection can calm anxiety faster than logic ever could. It's not emotional, it's chemical. When oxytocin is healthy, relationships feel grounding. 
Stress becomes easier to handle because your body no longer feels like it's facing everything alone. But when oxytocin is low, the world can feel colder. You may feel distant, guarded, or disconnected, even around people. Not because you don't care, but because your system isn't receiving the signal that it's safe to relax. Oxytocin doesn't push you forward. It lets you breathe. But safety alone isn't enough. Life still asks things of you, and that's where resilience comes in. That's the role of endorphins. Endorphins, the hormones of resilience. Endorphins are your body's natural painkillers. They don't remove pain. They change how pain feels. They're released during effort, movement, laughter, music, and challenge. That steady feeling after doing something hard, that quiet strength that shows up when things hurt but you keep going, that's endorphins. They help you tolerate discomfort. They turn effort into something sustainable. When endorphins are balanced, stress feels manageable. Challenges feel possible. When endorphins are low, everything hits harder, physically and emotionally. Pain lingers. Stress feels heavier. Not because life got harder, but because your internal buffer weakened. Endorphins don't motivate you. They support you while you try. And after effort, after stress, connection, and resilience, your body needs one thing more than anything else. Reset. That's where melatonin comes in. Melatonin, the reset signal. Melatonin is your body's signal for rest. It tells your system that it's safe to power down, that the day is done, that recovery can begin. As melatonin rises, your body slows. Thoughts loosen. Sleep becomes possible. This isn't just about rest. It's about repair. And without proper melatonin rhythms, no other system fully recovers. Melatonin regulates your internal clock. And when that rhythm is stable, everything else works better. Mood, focus, motivation, and stress tolerance. When melatonin is disrupted, you feel exhausted but unable to rest, foggy during the day, emotionally off balance. Everything feels slightly misaligned. Melatonin doesn't fix problems. It gives your body the chance to reset them. And once the body is rested, something important returns. Strength. That strength is supported by testosterone. Testosterone, the hormone of confidence. Testosterone isn't about aggression or dominance. At its core, it's about confidence and capability. It supports energy, focus, and the feeling that you can handle what's in front of you. When testosterone is balanced, you feel grounded, willing to take initiative, not reckless, steady. When it's low, energy drops, motivation fades, confidence weakens. Not because you changed, but because the chemical support for drive has been drained, often by long-term stress. Cortisol and testosterone work against each other. When survival stays switched on too long, confidence quietly shuts down. Testosterone asks, can I handle this? But strength without balance can turn rigid. That's why another system matters just as much. That system is estrogen. Estrogen, the hormone of integration. Estrogen is about integration. It helps your brain connect emotion, memory, focus, and awareness. It allows you to feel deeply without being overwhelmed. When estrogen is balanced, emotions feel informative instead of chaotic. Creativity flows more easily. Focus and memory are supported. There's an internal rhythm, a sense that things are syncing up. When estrogen is out of balance, emotions feel louder. Stress sensitivity increases. Focus slips. Not because you're too emotional, but because emotional regulation has lost its chemical support. Estrogen doesn't weaken strength. It gives it depth. After all of this, the body needs one final thing, recovery. Prolactin, the aftercare hormone. Prolactin is what your body releases after intensity. It lowers drive and signals, enough for now. It helps the system shift from action to restoration. When prolactin is balanced, recovery feels natural. You can slow down without guilt. Rest actually restores you. When prolactin is too high, motivation drops too far. When it's too low, recovery never fully happens. Prolactin balances dopamine, push and rest, effort and release. And finally, there's one hormone that quietly holds everything together. Vasopressin, the hormone of commitment. Vasopressin is about stability and commitment. While oxytocin creates warmth and closeness, vasopressin creates staying power. It's the sense of, this matters and I'm here. It helps anchor you to people, routines, goals, and responsibility. When vasopressin is balanced, structure feels supportive, 
not suffocating. Commitment feels grounding. When it's off, attachment weakens or becomes rigid. You either detach too easily or hold too tightly. Vasopressin doesn't excite you. It steadies you. None of these hormones work alone. Dopamine drives you forward. Serotonin steadies you. Cortisol and adrenaline protect you. Oxytocin connects you. Endorphins carry you through effort. Melatonin restores you. Testosterone grounds confidence. Estrogen integrates emotion. Prolactin enables recovery. Vasopressin anchors it all. So when something feels off, motivation, mood, stress, sleep, connection, the answer isn't, what's wrong with me? It's, which system needs support right now? As you're watching this, which one has been running your day lately? If this helped you understand yourself a little better, hit like so more people see it. And if you want more breakdowns like this, subscribe, because your body explains more than you think.